So this time we're trying a single 12 ounce strip steak, 370 degrees for 12 minutes. All right, so 12 minutes all on one side. This can't be right, can it? Guess it can be. Different parts of it are different temperatures. This is 150 on the end down here, but down here in the center, 102. Still needs a little longer. I think it's just not flipping. We give it four more minutes. I gotta tell you though, getting these things figured out because there was a period where I didn't have to flip them and it was they were coming out perfect. And now I'm having to flip them halfway through. I don't understand how it's changed, except that the air fryer has been through a lot of rotation since I first bought it. They don't appear to be the most sturdy, long lasting built things ever. So I guess they're not made to put up the constant daily use. <laughs> been doing curls between shoots here on making this meat. It's a good way to take advantage of the time that it takes to cook a steak. You can get your few reps in. Looks a little better in the center. Not really as far as I would thought, but now we're talking 130 degrees in there. Technically rare on that side, but 138 over here, 139. You can see it still comes out nice and pink in the center. So we'll let this sit a few minutes and then I'll go ahead and plate this up and get started with breakfast. So here I am trying something new. Well, two things new, sort of. For some reason, my outside refrigerator decided to freeze my steak that I had in the refrigerator for, for being thawed out. So I'm defrosting my steak. That's probably some kind of sin. This I'm preheating to 400 degrees. So we'll see how when I do this is uh, 1.57 pounds of New York strip steak, 14 minutes. So seven on each side and see how it comes out. I did not salt them an hour early though. But Katie's hungry, I'm hungry. We're gonna go ahead and salt them and eat them. All right, that's long enough. It's four minutes plus. All right, so let's go ahead and drop these in. Nah, not that. I've been kind of stuck lately in the 210s range, between 203 and 208. I got up above 210 for a little while there. I did go on vacation and have a few things I shouldn't have, but once again, I'm hypercritical because I'm trying not to ever do anything that I shouldn't do. And I would say, what I have like three chocolate bars worth of chocolate in the entire 10 plus days. I had one ice cream bar and I had about five beers. Still enough to be a problem. I feel like I need to get back to a more strict sense of this diet. It's hard when the rest of the family likes to just kind of dabble with the meat diet and I'm doing 100% meat. But I, I'm thankful thankful that my wife is participating with me because I know she feels better too. It's still good to have the participation and the boys are showing a lot of potential from it. Oh, and the dogs even. Carnivore Chris sent me these dog treats for the dogs to eat. I'll warn you right now, <laughs> if you get these for your dogs, they will not want dog food anymore because they're carnivores just like we are. And once you start eating meat, why would you want to eat anything but meat? Now, if they were hungry, I'm sure they would, but we don't let them go hungry. But my goodness, have these dogs tore these things up. But I gave Brita some of this beef jerky treat this morning, and these are human grade dog treats, which is like, I'm not sure I would, let me see. No, it still smells like dog treats. It's not bad. I can understand why they would like it. Hours, and then it was about 1.30 in the morning. I came out here and I just needed something to snack on. And I was so happy that I had carnivore crisps. Well, let me just show you what happened. I was just saying, these are such a good midnight snack. It's nice to have something like this so I don't have to make a whole steak or something. I was like 
Mm -hmm. I was gonna maybe get a bag because these are like so good. Don't you have two bags in there for right now? I from know. earlier today. I, I already ate them all. I would say beef brisket is my favorite. So ribeye, I think is number two. I don't know if they sent me any, but elk. The elk was oh, really good. Yeah. Eye of round is surprisingly good. It's Considering free. usually eye of round is like the low cut of meat and it's tougher. Mm -hmm. They're good as a chip. So I tried the um, his beef tops for one. Leg of lamb, leg of lamb is really good too. Let me just check this one. Well, actually, I like heart better than liver. But compared to potato chips, they're much better. For you. <laughs> that if you're interested in getting carnivore crisps, you can go to carnivorecrisps.com and order them using my discount code Dante, D-A-N-T-E, and get 10% off your order. You might just like them as much as I do. And I like them a lot. And he likes too. them a lot. I like them too. <laughs> yeah, I'm eating them. I can't stop eating them. They're addicting. It's scary how addicting they are. Come on, seven minutes. Ah! As I said, I'm the only one that's doing this 100%. I have not had any bread, though. I have been tempted because I love butter. And what do you want to put butter on? So I just eat the butter. <laughs> I thought I couldn't tolerate butter, but I've been having butter and it's been working out pretty good. This Amish rolled butter, RBST free, all natural. Ingredients, cream and salt. There you go. So now we got it in there for seven minutes. I did a fast flip on that. I wanted to get, keep it in the heat, keep it the pan hot, see if it makes a difference because this is a little less time that I would normally take to cook this much meat. But by preheating it, by flipping quickly, I think it's gonna make it come out pretty good. And those are about an inch, inch and a half, or sorry, inch and a quarter cut, which by the way is the only way to buy meat. I went to Food Lion yesterday and I've been to several other grocery stores. They all want you to buy this half inch thick and three quarter inch thick meat. That stuff will cook so quickly on the inside that you won't get a chance to have any real flavor of the meat anymore. You'll just have the cooked flavor. And a lot of times it just comes out tougher and it's very hard to get a medium rare cook on the very thin cut of meat. All right, here we should be ready to go. Fifty-nine, one fifty-nine. So these are Technically, I think, well done. How does that keep happening? I guess I did over, did overdo it, but let's take a look at the way the meat looks, though, because it's been very confusing. Yep, that's technically well done. All right, still pink in the center. We'll take a closer look here. You can see it's still pink in the center. So I don't understand these temperatures very well because they seem to come out real good to me at the temperatures that they're coming out at. But I've also noticed that the temperature's different depending on where you stick the probe in the meat. You know, I try to stick it in the fattest part of the meat so that I get whatever the coolest part of the center would be. But if I stick it in the end, it's gonna be way higher. But yeah, that's still overdoing it. 14 minutes. So next time I'll try six minutes on each side. Next time I do this amount of, and this thick of New York strip steak. Give me my meat. I got something I wanna to talk to you about today. And while I do that, I'm gonna prepare these New York strip steaks for the rest of the day and this morning. I mean, I initially started this with only six weeks in mind of trying to do something to change what's going on in my life. And now it has become a passion. It has become a motivation for what I do every day. So I decided to monetize after everybody that commented said to monetize. They had positive response to it. Let's face it, I'm a character. You're not telling me anything new. But more importantly, my content 
I would like to think, has value for you. Especially if you're where I was January 14th when I started this diet, wondering what you're gonna do to fix your problem. I watched a video earlier today with Dr. Ken Berry and Dr. What was his name? I just added his book to my Amazon list. Dr. Robert Lustig, who wrote a book called Metabolical, The Lure and Lies of Processed Food. They mentioned something at the very beginning of the interview that I thought was extremely interesting that I noticed as well, is that in the, the years preceding starting this diet, I knew I needed to exercise. I wanted to exercise, but I had no desire to get up and start exercising. Every time I thought about it, I felt defeated. I, before I even started, that I knew it was gonna end in disaster. They had talked about how by using a, a, a drug to reduce insulin production in children had caused them not only to lose weight, but to become active. That to me was very revealing because around March, after I started this diet in January, around March, I began doing some activity. And now I do far more activity than I did back then. And it's causing me to gain muscle mass. It's giving me strength. It helps clear my head. I mean, there's so many things that are beneficial about it. You know right now, sitting there, that you need to exercise. But if you're sitting there feeling like, ah, screw it. It's not gonna do any good. I'm just gonna let it off tomorrow. I'm just gonna whatever. I'm just feeling given up before I even started. It's not your fault. You gotta cut out the things that are inside of your body that are causing you to feel that way. The food manufacturers are against you in learning how to do that because they're using the chemical, ba the chemical balance of what they're making to make their food addictive to you so you will need more, not just want more. And that's the difference of an addiction is that you can want it but not need it. But when you're addicted, you need it. You feel like you need it. You can tell yourself you don't need it, but you need it. So you go and get it. And if getting it feeds those centers in your brain that are pleasure rewarding, they're gonna make it stronger the next time you wanna resist that you're gonna say no. So not only do you have that chemical side, but you also have the advertising side where they tell you lies like XYZ is heart healthy, or this is good for weight loss, this is low fat so it's better for you. Whatever they tell you is ultimately designed just to get you to buy their food. Hi, Levi. Hey, Doctor. What you up to? Do you mind if I have a piece of steak? No, I don't mind. Okay. Levi knows what's good. Let me get you a little plate. Thank you. Oh, Here you go, you take that one. Thank you. Go ahead and cut your mother's up for her. You may steal a little piece. Now I need a fork. I made some notes on that video I watched earlier, so I wanted to share some of these thoughts with you. This was one of the key points I wanted to cover. And I remember learning about this on Atkins, is the way you can know that the food industry is behind this is simply the fact that we consume at least four times the sugar we did 100 years ago. Now we didn't do that on our own. It had a few things involved in that process. But for the most part, it's the pushing of the sugar into the food to get you to be addicted to it. The molecule in sugar that makes it so divine to our brain, said Dr. Lundig, is fructose, because glucose isn't all that sweet. Fructose is three mitochondrial toxins in one. And ultimately, that's the one that's the fuel gauge for the, the cell, the one for breaking up fats into two carbon fragments for oxidation, and it also inhibits the shuttle for getting fatty acids into the mitochondria for burning. All of this blocking of mitochondrial processes eliminates sugar's calorific effect to give you energy. So it's not even giving you energy. Alcohol also works that way when we ingest it because it has calories, but our body doesn't treat it that way. 
we're not actually getting any energy from the alcohol. And surprisingly, recently, even trans fats have finally fallen into the category of not being a food. They've been considered a food for a very long time, but there's a very strong reason why they're not anymore. And that's because we've come to find out that our mitochondria can't break the trans double bond, so we can't use it for energy. It actually just gums up the system. So it's not about calories. It's not about calories in, calories out, no matter how much the zealots want to preach that to you. When I consume this food instead of the other foods that permeate the store shelves, I'm healthier. But Dante, doesn't that make it your fault if you're still fat? Only if you don't do anything about it once you know better. You didn't know before. So now I know. Now I know what they're lying to me about. So if I continue to eat it, now it's my fault. However, they still have an advantage of constant advertising propaganda about their foods. And then when you give in and give that a try, they also have the chemical advantage of it telling your pleasure center, more of this. The biomes in your body telling your brain, more of this right now. Because they love that horrible stuff, the bad bacteria. They don't call the gut the second brain for nothing. But think about how many food commercials you consume in a day. Whether watching it on the internet, watching it on television, watching it as you're driving down the highway on billboards, listening to the radio, everywhere you go, everywhere you turn, somebody's advertising a food product that is horrible for you and they're making it sound great. They're making it sound healthy when it's not. And eventually there needs to be a backlash against this. Just like there was against the, the cigarette industry for deception pra practices such as this, there should be a backlash against the food industry for these deceptive practices. I've told y'all before, I did not do a lot of cooking before this. I'm getting a little better at it, but six months of eating this way has not pushed me to become a, a chef or to find out better ways to cook it as much as it has just finding easier ways to get it ready. Going from the grill and the stove to the air fryer has been a godsend. There are times when my steak doesn't come out as good as I would like because I'm not perfect on the times of cooking, but I still get the meat I need and I still love it. One of these days I'll have all this air frying stuff down because I've used some other people's guides and there's not enough information to get everything perfect it seems like because the thickness of the meat, the quantity of the meat, the size of the air fryer, whether or not you've preheated, there's so many factors. What temperature you're going to be on and for how long between flipping, if you need to flip it at all, there's a lot of factors. Do you know there's a reason why they call it culinary arts, right? It's not a science. When you act like it's a science, you're gonna get mixed results, and then you're not gonna understand why, I think. So we're getting up a little early today. We gotta go down to Florida, pick some of my mother-in-law's stuff down to her new place, and we're gonna go down to our new place and take a look around there, get some measurements, and meet with a contractor. So that means I gotta have some food ready to go. It sounds like we're gonna be kind of on the fly a lot. Little deer meat cube steak, deer meat hamburger. Great for keeping something cold if you want or even keeping it warm in the windshield of the car. So you got some food ready to go. Real important to being able to stay on track. And you gotta do a lot of moving around. I only wear the gloves so I don't have to get a whole bunch of grease between my ring, rings and grease all over my hands all day because the fat just kind of sticks to me. I have no idea what I'm doing when it comes to making hamburger meat the right way. I have a feel for it. it doesn't seem to always work out like I planned. Here I'm gonna make one of those meatloaf sized bricks. I'm gonna make it a little flatter than I have in the past so that when it starts to bow up some in the middle it doesn't become a round ball of meat. Now let's go ahead and preheat this truck. We should be ready to put this in. I'll do 12 minutes on one side and 12 minutes on the other. 400 degrees. See how this uh, deer meat comes out. And while I'm at it, I can go ahead and prep these cube steaks. They don't need as much salt because they're so thin, you don't have as much meat there. You'll only taste salt if you put too much. 
Oh, this meat is so tender. I'll be lucky to pull this off. I need to go ahead and refill my salt bottle. So that'll be ready to take with me. And there we go. Salt's ready to go. Meat's on the way. All right, I've let this sit for a few minutes to see if it can be a little more solid before I try to flip it. Because as you can see, it's already separated. You can see a line here and a line here and a line here where the meat's kind of separating. So it's gonna make it hard to flip. And that's the problem with a big piece of meat like this. So we slide it over to one side to give us some room to play. And that also separates it from the pan. And then we can get a good flip on it. I'm gonna do 10 more minutes at 400 degrees on this side. Cause I really don't wanna overcook burger. So the deer meat bur uh, loaf came out really good. We'll take a look at the inside. You can see it's cooked, but it's still juicy in the center. Perfect. So I've put the cube steak in here and this doesn't take nearly as long as the hamburger meat. So I'm gonna do five minutes on each side. I'm almost tempted to do four. I'm gonna leave it at 370. Let me try five minutes on the first round and then we'll see how that comes out. So after five minutes on one side and four minutes on the other, these cube steaks are as done as they can be without being overdone. Perfect. Love it. These are so good for taking on trips because they're small and compact. You can fit them all into a bag and they don't taste bad, not fully hot. Now we're ready to go there. Get some breakfast made here. We'll have some ribeye for breakfast. Okay, I may have committed the ultimate sin here, but I am trying to cook a cowboy cut ribeye in an air fryer. Uh, I knew it was gonna be really thick. So, I mean, it is really thick. So it was gonna be hard to cook the center of the meat at the normal temperatures that I've been using. So I've started off by doing 12 minutes on each side at 300 degrees. So far, it's looking pretty good. I'm pretty sure it's not done on the inside yet. Let's take a little peek at the temperature inside and see if we're anywhere close. 101, a little on the low side. So let's put it in. Now we're gonna raise the temperature and do it for six minutes on each side. Instead of 300, I'll do 350 and we'll try that. All right, let's see where we're at after that second, that first six minutes, 121. Outer edges is 160, but our center still rare. So, let's go six more minutes at 300. And maybe 300 would have been good all the way around. Now, that's a little low for normally cooking steak, I would think. But I, I really don't even know why they choose, you know, higher temperatures other than the searing effect. Uh, and it's got a decent sear after that first six minutes. So, let's see how it does. This is why I'm here, so you don't have to waste your money on a cowboy cut ribeye in your air fryer and be disappointed with it. You can just watch me try to do it. All right, here we go. Let's see. Hopefully we got the final result now. 130 and rising in the dead center. So let's take a look at this. First, we'll look at it on the surface. I probably could have taken the bone out earlier. But, uh, and I really didn't even need the bone, but I didn't want to get rid of it. There's some meat on there I wanted to chew off. So I would say take the bone out earlier. I hate that I couldn't fit the bone in there on the meat, but it is what it is. Mm. Oh my God. Oh, it's perfect. Look at that. Look at that. Cook. That is, oh yeah. I'm happy with that. Let's see how it tastes. It's been sitting already in the pot for about eight minutes since I, <clears throat> since the cooking finished. For this thick of cut of meat, that's perfect. So I think 300 degrees on that third time in the fryer would have been just fine. But uh, that may have helped give it the sear that it has too, doing 350. My crowns are still heat sensitive. I'm afraid to start chewing it right now. Mmm. Mmm. 
that piece on the edge over here. Mm. Mm, so good, I don't care about the pain. I, I, I am continue to be amazed by the power of the inexpensive air fryer. Yeah, I should have taken the bone out earlier. That's gonna go good in the bone bag. Where is my bone bag? That's my lamb bone bag, but I'll go ahead and put this in there. I think I'll be able to tell it's not a lamb bone. All right, here we go. You know, something interesting is that my allergies have come back pretty hard this summer, but I can tell you this. My kids, uh, when we went to Michigan, both had a cold after a couple of days. Um, first, my youngest got it, and then the older one got it, and then I got it. And normally when I get sick, I take it harder and longer than they do. I got it four days after the younger one got it, and I was over it before either of them were over their illness. So my body is doing a much better job of fighting off illness. Mmm. <laughs> you know, as I was driving down to Florida last week in Michigan the week before, we have to stop for gas a lot. And I realized every time we stop at a gas station, it's such an unusual thing for me to not go in and get a soda and some chips or snack of some kind. And it's something I was basically teaching my family to do too, because every time we went anywhere, everybody wanted their snack and their special thing every time we stopped. But doing this diet, there's hardly anything in the convenience store that I have an interest in now. So when you talk about spending extra money on the meat diet, I mean, I'd go into a convenience store and spend five bucks on something that isn't doing anything for me uh, not really fit feeding my hunger either, just my craving. And it doesn't go away, so you still have cravings afterward. But that's five bucks down the drain. And when you got four people in the family and everybody wants to stop and get some junk food, now you got, you know, 10, 15, 20 dollars worth of junk food that you've just uh, added to your, your body's problems. You're spending more money on your trip. creating new doctor bills for yourself down the road. And uh, setting yourself up for failure. I don't see how you can say that this is more expensive than doing that. Uh, as a matter of fact, it's, it's kind of liberating to be able to pull into a convenience store, get gas, and have no reason to go inside the building except maybe to go to the bathroom. But uh, yet, when I stop, I still have that lure to want to go in and get something. It's like smoking. It's like hard to get out of the the act of, of doing the hand to mouth thing because it's what you're used to doing. Well, when you stop at a convenience store, it's what I'm used to doing is going in and getting a snack. So it's liberating, but it's also part of overcoming the addiction it is uh, changing the culture of your lifestyle to fit this healthier lifestyle. It's just amazing to me how much the social aspect of everything really does affect our eating habits and our health. So the light again. I'm down in the valley, valley of the jolly green giant. <laughs> well, my memory card ran out right in the middle of talking about that. I don't even remember where I was. But, oh God, it's so good.
Oh. Fryer's not out. Hope we washed it last night. Hey, we did. Ah. Bria barks at that washer every time. Is that washer making scary noises, Bria? Good girl, you keep us safe from that mean washing machine. <laughs>